Pac-12 kickoff week is presented by Taco Bell and brought to you by Old Trapper. What's your beef? And by Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Well, an early start to the football season. It's still August. It feels like <laughs> summer. What are we doing? But it's beautiful. It's 82 degrees just past 5 o'clock here. It's gorgeous, gorgeous late afternoon. And the Coliseum ready. They are ready for what they anticipate. I mean, probably the most anticipated USC football season in quite a while. Yeah, since Coach Carroll was here. Yep. And there is juice all over L.A. and all throughout this stadium. All right, San Jose State won the toss and chose to take the ball first. Eddie Chaplitsky, new Trojan, with the kickoff fair catch immediately taken by Isaac Jernigan of San Jose State. And so it's, uh, and then we were speaking with Lincoln Riley as we did a couple of times this week, Yogi, and you do often. It's a little more comfortable, isn't it, for him? <laughs> yeah, a lot different than when we called the opener a year ago. And he said, look, this game is not going to be that comfortable either. He knows how talented San Jose State is. So nobody asked him about San Jose State all week, but he made sure he told this team how powerful this offense of the Spartans is. Well, the quarterback is Shevin Cordero. He is from a quarterback pipeline that we've come to know well on the West Coast, the pipeline of Honolulu, St. Louis High School. This is his sixth year, four years at Hawaii, two years now at San Jose State. And right away a keep, and there is one of the new people you highlighted, Yo, Anthony Lucas with his first play as a Trojan. Uh, Alex Grinch talked about they're able to coach guys, not manage work ethic, things off the field. And you watch Anthony Lucas stay square to the line of scrimmage, showcase that athleticism that made him a five-star recruit. And quite simply, Ted, they didn't make that play a year ago. San Jose State huddling their inside eight. The three receivers stayed out wide. Tight end Olsen slides. Running back stays in to pick up the blitzer that gets Cordero out. And Cordero makes a nice open field move to get a first down, but you can see that Cordero that's going to be under review. Well, you could feel the presence, A, of USC's defense and Mason Cobb on the blitz. And then you saw the grittiness of Chevin Cordero not just sliding and going down. Holding defense, number 19. 10-yard penalty from the end of the play. Automatic first down. Our referee is Jeff Dale. The holding penalty against Jalen Smith of the Trojans. Attack on foul. And this will be something to watch today because San Jose State, good offensive year last year, 7-5 and five season. But they allowed 42 sacks. Cordero was sacked a ton. Yeah, and they're excited for this offensive line because they bring back 100% of the snaps from a year ago with a lot of experience that you referenced. Fly sweep action. And there's a good pursuit and backside tackle by Mason Cobb. Isaac Jernigan on the carry. And this is a terrific story. Brett Brennan has a lot of pack. Played at UCLA. He's from the Bay Area. Coached at Oregon State for quite a while. And Brent Brennan, in his seventh year at San Jose State, nobody in modern San Jose State history has stayed that long at the school. It's been a big win for the Spartans. Conley goes in motion, ooh, and that throw just a little bit high, and Sam Olsen, one of the Spartans who played here two years ago, San Jose State played their week one opener on this field two seasons ago, and Olsen caught three in that game. Yeah, they're going to have to find ways to find their tight ends. San Jose State is without Dominic Mazzotti, a tight end, who they have big expectations for, not going to go tonight. All right, so here's the first test for the Trojan D, a third down. Three receivers to the wide side. Empty backfield. Kyrie Robinson coming to the bottom. Four rushed. USC gets through, but Cordero escapes. And Cordero is going to get the first down. Right to the stick and just past it as Jalen Smith pursued. Well, Bear Alexander, number 90, right in the middle of your screen, finds his way in through the offensive line. Cordero, he's not the 
only athlete at quarterback on this field. We talk about Caleb Williams a ton, but you got to talk about Cordero and what he can do with his legs. That's the second big play for him extending the drive. That was a new player in Bear Alexander and then a veteran Solomon Bird who's had a very good fall for USC. They were the two in Cordero's face. All right, a fifth man coming, but a screen set up to Kyrie Robinson. And Mason Cobb fights off a block there to make a good chunk of that tackle for USC. Stanley Taufu also helping. They're a big part of San Jose State. You've seen it on this drive. They're going to change up their tempos. Sometimes they'll huddle. Sometimes they'll get to the line of scrimmage. We've seen four different formations already on this drive, Ted, including going wide open. They want to try to keep USC guessing, make them change their calls with shifts and motions. There's another one. Two tight end shift. Robinson single back. Make the jet sweep to Jernigan. Hand it to Robinson, who broke a couple of tackles. But this one has the look of coming back. Yeah, that's a hole of Anthony Pardue, the center. He's all over USC. Second down. And so that'll push the Spartans back into a longer second down. You know, what we've seen from SC, Ted, is A, a they're rotating a lot of players on this defensive line on this first drive, but are they coming off the ball? And I think that's what speaks to these transfers, whether it's Jack Sullivan, 99, Bear Alexander, Keon Bars. You've seen a lot of different faces on this defensive front. And so now the Spartans of San Jose State long go here, second and 17. And that was going to be a keep by Cordero, but he had nowhere to go, could not get out. Williams in from the secondary. Jack Sullivan, one of the new Trojans, in off the front. Ted, this is all right here. Watch Jamil Muhammad. He's the rush end. He's going to crash down. Offensive line is going to flow with him. He's going to open up the rush lane for two Trojans. Big play, Max Williams. And that's going to make that man, Alex Grinch, pretty happy. Eighth opening day for Alex Grinch as a defensive coordinator. We first knew him at Washington State, of course, then to Ohio State, Oklahoma, and with Riley to USC. Third down roll. It's going to be a completion of well short of the necessary yards, Nick Nash on the reception for San Jose State. So, a promising opening drive, really blunted by the holding penalty. Watch this. This is a true freshman. Taka Curtis. Most freshmen light up a quarterback, Ted. This guy doesn't. The functional football intelligence, the coaches have raved about him. That play stands out to me as his best play on that first drive of not hitting someone. It's a good call. We'll get, you'll get to know, trust me, as we go along more about Tackett Curtis. USC fans are going to find out a lot about him. That punt hits right on the nose from Alex Weir and skips into the end zone. So it'll be a USC touchback. And here comes the man that when we were here in the spring, for the spring game, and he got on the headset, and we asked him, you ever heard of Archie Griffin? I didn't expect, oh, I know all about him. <laughs> and of course, to his great credit, Yogi, he has not talked at all about the chance to do something that only Archie Griffin has ever done. He's talked about, and he said, that he uses the word immortal, which is an interesting word, to win a championship. He's been trained from a young age what it means to play this position, and it's a position that gets a ton of attention, a ton of hype. But you've got to elevate the people around you. He's done that, hopes to do it again. All right, starting in the backfield is Austin Jones, second year here after a career at Stanford. And Williams dumps it off. And getting a touch right away is a freshman, Zachariah Branch. And if you think USC doesn't reload, just stick with us today and listen to these receivers that we talk about, the new ones. Gain of eight. Player that has really emerged this fall, Kyron Hudson, trying to run before he had it. They said he had the best camp among all the receivers, and we count about 10 that would probably start at most places around the country. So high praise from Lincoln Riley for that group and Hudson. Third down, actually, the Trojans just need a yard here. They have to get to the 30. Pistol with Austin Jones. 
And first down, carry. Boston Jones from the Bay Area, again transferred down from Stanford last year, backed up Travis Dye. Expects to split a lot of the reps early, running back with a newcomer, Marshawn Lloyd. Yeah, they've got a talented backfield, and keep an eye on that left guard, Ted. True freshman Alani Noah got the start, so a lot of freshmen we yeah. saw early. Jones gets a good read on that block. Nice cutback, Austin Jones. And saving tackle by Trey Jenkins. What a great job of playing off Jonah Monheim's block there by Austin Jones. Well, it starts with Alani Noah, the true freshman, watching with the long hair. He starts pulling along with Monheim. This is signature Lincoln Riley. Bring two offensive linemen from one side to the other. And now the quick tempo, and Williams pulls the ball down. And gets outside and with a big run by Austin Jones is the key. And now USC's at the 21 yard line. You know, always new wrinkles with Lincoln Riley. That's the second time they ran that play. It's kind of a version of the triple option. Hey, Caleb Williams running all the way down the line, this time to his left, could flick it back instead of pitch it back. So many options, so many weapons. Austin Jones' big run was 37 yards. Right now, second and one. And Marshawn Lloyd makes his first appearance, wearing zero. Oh, good stop there. San Jose State, that's Brian Parham, one of their returning linebackers. Long Beach. Long Beach Poly. Yeah, nice feel, play, it's third down. Heck yeah, they feel really good about him. 93 tackles a year ago. He's had a huge role. He'll be spying Caleb Williams on a lot of third downs like right here. Ed Lloyd stays in, just offset right from Williams. And a line up and run it again, and this time Lloyd angles left and gets enough for the first down before Javion Cole tackles out of the secondary. And we had a chance to spend some time with Marshawn Lloyd playing, of course, for Nick Lincoln Riley, but he played against Caleb Williams growing up in Pop Warner football, high school football. And now he joins them representing that region of the country out here. And Austin Jones back in. Deuce Robinson in the slot to the right, one of the highly regarded freshman receivers that USC brought in. All right, Williams. And now, we well, saw an awful lot of that last year. <laughs> kind of a combination to me of a little Doug Flutie, a little Russell Wilson, that escapability, but that time nowhere to go and just launched it. Yeah, smart by him. Two freshmen out there, Deuce Robinson and Jacoby Lane. So, look, a lot of talent. And I love how Lincoln Riley has rotated a lot of young guys early on, get them involved in this game plan. Freshman wide receivers here, Branch, Lane, and Robinson, all highly regarded. Just highly Lane. regarded. Yeah. Jacoby Lane alone to the bottom. Press cover by San Jose State. And the handoff goes inside to another freshman, and look at Quentin Joyner break away. Couldn't quite turn down the sideline, but another talented freshman from Texas, Quinton Joyner. And how many times are we going to say another talented freshman? Yeah. You know, it's a first drive. Said it three times. But well, these guys have earned the playing time. And yeah. that's what Lincoln Riley said he had to tell these guys. And it's interesting, Yogi, because on the defensive side, we're going to talk a lot about portals. And on the offense, it's freshmen. Nailed it. Although Marshawn Lloyd is a portal guy as he motions out to the bottom. So five wide for Caleb Williams, and there's the touchdown! First catch is a Trojan for Dorian Singer. Play design was incredible. They used motion to make sure it's man-to-man -man coverage, and it is, and it's Dorian Singer flattens off the post. Not many DVs in America have a chance with that route against him in the slot. First catch as a Trojan, first touchdown as a Trojan. Dennis Lynch on to kick the point.
80-yard touchdown drive. Score comes on play 10. This is a mission-minded team. Dorian Singer from walk-on to all everything to now USC Trojan, his first grab and tug in the books. Early start to football season, but uh, hey, it feels like a campus, doesn't it? All week long we were here, students everywhere. Yeah, it, it's good to be back. Week zero, we've never done a week zero game, Ted. It's, it's fun to get going now versus just watching yeah. these games. Well, Dorian Singer there, that's a huge story that again will develop if you're not familiar. Caleb Williams last year watching Dorian Singer light up the Trojans for Arizona turns to a coach on the sideline during the game saying, why don't we go get that guy? <laughs> Welcome to college football 2023. They did. <laughs> Isaac Jernigan on this, trying to run it from the two yard line. Yeah, a nice little alleyway opened up for him up the left hash and he gets it out close to the 30. Let's take a look at his touchdown. The play design is incredible. This is Marshawn Lloyd. He's going to go in motion. And when he does that, the defense is going to kick out. That's Dorian Singer. So all of a sudden, these defenders bump out one. It puts him in man-to-man -man coverage. I guess really his own coverage. Nobody touches him off the line of scrimmage. It's a pretty easy post drop. Flattens it off. Caleb Williams, Dorian Singer, all day long they can make that one happen. So second possession now for San Jose State. And quarter of last second ball that Sam Olson from Visalia not able to hang on. San Jose State today, they, they can't have unforced errors. That's their second drop of the game. They have a couple penalties that hurt the previous drive. They, they've got the ability to, to compete in this game, Ted, but they've got to make sure they have those sure-handed grabs as completions or first down conversions. And Brent Brennan, again, given his familiarity with the pack and the fact that his Spartans played here two years ago, I know the situation. Nice cutback by Kyrie Robinson from the Bay Area High School powerhouse, De La Salle. And Robinson gets it out close to midfield, 20-yard run. Yeah, this is impressive. When you teach the stiff arm to running backs, say so you want to use the defender's momentum to create some for you, it's exactly what happened with Robinson, one of the leaders of this team. Big game. Well, a run game would be a big plus for San Jose State. They averaged under 100 yards a game rushing last year. Takes some of the uh, squeeze off of Cordero. That's Nick Nash motioning. And the stop route back to the near side is caught. Charles Ross on the catch inside the USC 40. What a grab from Ross. I mean, he and Damani Jackson, they get to the ball almost at the same time. Cordero feels the pressure, steps right into it. Nice job by him, and, and they've got to step up because Justin Lockhart isn't going today as a receiver for Brent Brennan's squad. Inside kid, and that's all jammed up. That's Wally Conley from Fresno came to San Jose State this year via Dixie State slash Utah Tech. Elijah Hughes on the play for the Trojan D. Freshman Elijah Hughes, defensive lineman. I mean, you look at that D line, it's transfer Jamel Muhammad, the freshman Hughes, transfer Jack Sullivan. I mean, it is completely different than what it was a year ago for the most part. Of course, Sullivan is way up top. Um, down two hands on the turf. Screen pass to Robinson. He's got room. Whoa! And then Robinson is sent head over heels by Kalen Bullock. But San Jose State has the ball down to the 30 of the Trojans. A really good play call, I think, from Kevin McGiven, their OC. Setting up the screen, and then the All-American Bullock. Third and short, and I think this is four down territory for Brent Brennan to... You think you can beat USC this year kicking field goals? I'm going to go with negative yeah, on that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Conley is the running back. And he's got it. Just enough for Conley on the drive, and it's a first half for San Jose State. Yeah, we're going up against the defensive front with Bear Alexander, all 305 pounds, and right in the middle of the nose. As a running back, you got to hesitate a hair. Watch what happens with Conley. Little hesitation, allow the push to come and then find the crease, knowing he only needed about a half a yard. That's so winding down toward three minutes to go in the first. Whoops, bad start there by San Jose State. Full start. Offense number 61. Shevin Cordero that helped engineer again a seven win season, a bowl game for San Jose State last year, which is a terrific measure for their program. St. Louis High School in Honolulu, we're talking about, where he played behind Tua. <laughs> and he sat behind Tua. He only played one year because of Tua. Yeah. A swing pass, but skidding out there and not able to get anything going. Mason Cobb on the defense. You said this defense is based on playing fast. They always say they want two guys with free eyes. So when you see it happen, you can just attack the ball. Watch Mason Cobb seize it all day long. Bam! Puts his right foot in the ground. He's all over the swing pass. So now the Spartans empty, and they go four wide to the top. Quick inside throw, and that was ran and beaten by USC. Sierra Wright jumping in there to squeeze that one to Isaac Jernigan. You'd be kidding yourself if you thought USC players didn't hear all the dialogue. Talking to a couple guys on the field in pregame, a few coaches. On defense, they said, we can't wait to play. We are so sick and tired of hearing how bad our defense was a year ago. Now here's their chance to relent. U.S. San Jose State, rather, with a penalty and then a negative play, and suddenly it's third and 22. And Cordero flushed. He's going to get some yardage. He's going to get a lot of yardage. Look at Cordero. Takes it for a San Jose State first down. You know what's interesting, Ted, is because Shevin Cordero can scramble so much, the DBs are taught, hey, when the play continues, make sure you go look up the receivers because they might throw it. Well, Christian Roller Wallace looked up the receiver and never saw Cordero running. Twenty eight yards on that run by Cordero and that red zone time first red zone challenge for the USC D Tell you what I take a shot at the red zone here See if you can get this defense press coverage to loosen up a little Conley is the running back big hole for Conley Right to the goal line Let's see if it's going to be a first and goal, but USC stood him up just shy. Max Williams made the first hit. I mean, Navarro, the right tackle. You'll see him right there. How about that block right there? Get Solomon Bird. Opens up a gaping hole. You see Kalen Bullock also being the guy that really stopped the forward run of Conley. He's gotten so much stronger. But oh, okay, 20 yeah. pounds, yeah, from last year. Well, that's something you, we came out Tuesday to practice. You don't talk about that right away. You can see they look stronger. Yeah, they... Bigger. They look the part here at yeah. the end of the first physically. Yeah. All right, the run by Conley gives San Jose State first and goal. They allow the quarter clock to run out, so we'll switch to the sunny end, the peristyle end of the Coliseum on a beautiful late August Saturday. Yes, it is football season in the Southland. Alex Grinch in there who uh, we first again met Alex Grinch when he was working with Mike Leach up at Washington State and he did a magnificent job. He did a magnificent job to build a defense there and of course he has a New Hampshire route so 
When Chip Kelly first found out about me, he goes, hey, Grinchy, my friend. <laughs> so uh, we've kind of had a little fun with Alex through the years, but Lincoln Riley, to his credit, steadfast, steadfast in his support of Grinch after last season. And I, and I agree with that. I mean, look, USC overachieved a lot last year, but the expectation of this place is to win and win big. And I think their jump will be year two, and a lot of it's because those guys right over the football right now. Kyrie Robinson behind Shevin Cordero. Oh, and he got hit in the backfield. And that's Mason Cobb. And you've already seen in one quarter plus one play, you've seen why Mason Cobb walked right in here to his starting spot. He had 13 TFLs last year at Oklahoma State. Yeah, well, they get some push up the middle. He comes flying off the edge. This defense knows that they've got to make a big jump. And Yogi, the position, inside backer was a position. Yep, oh and yeah. Both starters from last year are not starting today. It's Mason Cobb and the freshman Curtis. Second down, take the jet sweep, and Cordero has to get rid of it. Nobody there. Well, the Trojan defense has stopped two. At least one more, if not two, to go. Flag down. Flag down back in the end zone. Holding and that's defense number seven. Half the distance for yeah. goal. Automatic first down. And there it is. That's the problem with that penalty. Yep. It's a first down. Yep. You know, we talked to Alex Frick yesterday. He looked us dead in the eye and said, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. I'm really optimistic, and you got to put them in these adverse situations, see how the defense handles it. And for San Jose State, they're confident. They like this offensive front. All right, single back is Kyrie Robinson. Nick Nash along to the bottom. And Robinson is going to... Yes, they say broke the play. Touchdown, San Jose State. Touchdown, San Jose State. Kyrie Robinson at 10 on the ground last year. He gets the Spartans' first touchdown of this year. Nice job on that interior old line. And then it's all Robinson against Mason Cobb. That's just effort right there, finding his way inches, if not centimeters, over the plane. All right, Spartans kick game a little bit unsettled this week. They have a new kicker, Kyler Halverson. Came from Hawaii. Halverson is a kickoff specialist, and they were just decided to, late in the week to give him a chance to be the placement kicker today. And he puts his first one through. Seven all. We all love the preseason and rankings, and in the Pac-12, Five teams ranked in the top 18. I think UCLA Tech could sneak in there as well. They're that talented, but SC, UW, Utah, Oregon, and the darlings of Oregon State. Who will make it to Vegas? I don't know, but I love that those first four logos, they actually play each other in the regular season. Woohoo! Makes my August every year when that preseason bowl comes out. <laughs> I know but, you. I, but I tell you, that one's legit. I mean, in that regard, this, this conference, these teams this year, these quarterbacks, and yeah, that's the first time we've seen Relique Brown on the field so far today. Not able to run it back, so we'll have another little pause here before the USC possession. Now well, that's a little history lesson here for you. Archie Griffin, Ohio State, the only two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Back in the 70s, and again, most impressive that Caleb Williams knew that yeah. <laughs> when we spoke with him here in April at the spring game. What a summer he had. He had a European trip. He did. Took mom with him and all over Europe, including the Amalfi Coast. He was smart enough to not drive on that most gorgeous stretch of Italy. Not much there for Marshawn Lloyd. And you referenced that Marshawn Lloyd comes from after playing at South Carolina, but he went to DeMatha High School, rival high school. They played each other in conference championship games senior year. But Caleb Williams threw a Hail Mary pass on the final play of the game to win the championship. 
And it was an incredible play, too. You can find it on YouTube. It is awesome to watch that play. And it says a perfect throw. Yeah. As a Hail Mary would go. Perfect throw. Whoa. Williams has the ball, though. And look at this. At the end of the play, not much of a game, but a nice display of elusiveness. Eventually, Elijah Wood pressuring Caleb Williams pushed him out. Seeing a little rotation on that offensive line now as well. Emmanuel Pregnon, the transfer from Wyoming, is in at left guard. We've seen some penetration on the last two plays from San Jose State. All right, second possession for the Trojans. And immediately into a long third down. More pressure, and that forces Williams to get rid of it. Nice job there by the San Jose State defense. It's Trey Smith, who's a guy they hope could be their version of a game changer. Trey Smith, who only played one game all of last year for San Jose State. He's the number three here. It's going to really put the squeeze on. Yeah, you see Smith there. There comes pressure from this side, though, Ted. And that's really what flushes Caleb Williams right into Trey Smith. And because he was still within the tackle box, Caleb Williams, the flag was for intentional grounding, which, of course, puts the punt. USC number 10 is now number 45. Puts the punter, Chaplitsky, back by the goal line. Three Chris Smith plays. does get a sack on that, by the way. Three plays, three different looks from the yeah. defense of San Jose State. Arizona State for two years. Eddie Chaplitsky had a pretty good punting record there. Comes in here, hangs one up very high. Nice punt that forces a fair catch by DJ Harvey of San Jose State. Well, the Spartans played this USC team tough two years ago. Our performance award presented by Next Diva to Caleb Williams, who was the conference offensive player of the year, and of course the Heisman and an incredible number of USC records, points everywhere. To win the Heisman, to overcome the bias that comes from voting blocks in other parts of the country is even more significant for a player out here. <laughs> well, right now, San Jose State, opportunity, good field position for the drive start. And good defensive pressure there. Eric Gentry getting in the game for the first time. Push Kyrie Robinson out to negative play. There's Gentry, the second year now with the Trojans. Injuries have kind of slowed his progress. Yeah, he had a long road of recovery. I'll remember that Utah game at Salt Lake City a year ago. He's hobbling after the injury. His recovery took a long time. Finally feels at full strength. So Cordero on second down. And that one is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. It was batted up in the air by Bear Alexander. And smartly, I think an offensive lineman just makes sure this falls to the ground for the incompletion. Look at Bear Alexander working his hands in slow-mo. I mean, that, that is a work of art from a guy who's 305 pounds. They say defensive lineman, like, can you be a dancing bear? Can you be massive but have light feet? <laughs> That's his, good. his name is literally yeah. Bear, and he just did that. Well, he played. I mean, he <laughs> contributed in the championship game last year for Georgia. That's how good a coup it was for uh, the USC felt it was a coup that they could grab him in the portal. Up third down, USC showing all kinds of different looks. Gentry was dancing himself in the middle. Ball start. Offense number 88. Yeah, Alex Grinch is strength. When he has the bodies and personnel that they want to have, which they think they have this year, is by making it look so complex, but it being the same thing. So you saw Christian Roland Wallace, number 17. He's over the ball right now. He's a defensive back. He's right here. I mean, come on, man. Him and Gentry right in that. Okay, here's some football. The A gap. <laughs> Cordero tucks it down, and this time he can't get out, and that's Gentry that makes sure if Gentry didn't get him, Cordero might have had first down. Yeah, and it'll be in man-to-man -man coverage, a little bit of pressure there. How about Gentry? Anthony Lucas flushes him. 
Gentry got a seven foot one inch wingspan. Used it all right there. Nice tackle, because you're right, if not, that's another long conversion yeah. from Shevin Cordero. There's a lot of green if uh, if Cordero had gotten past Gentry. Instead, it'll be a punt. We are second punt of the game for San Jose State. Branch will let it hit and skip out of bounds. And we get a flag. August is a month, and if you watch football, no matter what day or night of the week, you'll see a lot of flags on special teams plays in August. <laughs> Especially on the outside positions, those guys that are holding up. During the return, holding, receiving team number 16. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Time out on the field. So it'll back up Lincoln Riley and uh, the Trojans. Now that's mid season four for the coach. <laughs> Ah, listen to this, a thrower of multi-dimensions. May in Washington, his hometown, Caleb Williams throwing out the first pitch at a Nationals game. And then July 7th at Dodger Stadium with his own line. How appropriate was this? But I got to tell you something. He is just a bit outside. I don't care. He threw both from the top of the mound. And that is hard. If you've never done that, and Caleb admitted it afterwards, he had nobody, he didn't realize the mound was that high. When you've never done it, it is a different feeling. <laughs> Not that Much more than the child. crowd on the field at Oregon State. <laughs> oh, Yogi, okay? yeah, you're right. All right, here we go. So now for possession for the Trojans. Touchdown drive on the first, three and out on the second. And just a quick completion to start drive three to Dorian Singer. Kenyon Reed on the cover. Singer from St. Paul, Minnesota, moved to Arizona during COVID. And wound up playing high school for a year down there. And there's Zachariah Branch. And he can't get enough for the first down. It's going to leave a th short third down here for USC. A nice job on that play. And coverage taking away the first three reads. And then Caleb Williams a year ago, Ted, how's he gotten better? A year ago, he takes it and runs. This year, he worked all the way backside to Branch. Yeah. Well, that was a word. Uh, Lincoln Riley used it yesterday when I asked him. And then again in your pregame interview with Lincoln, he said the same thing. How is Caleb Williams better this year? Situational. Yeah. And that's Taj Washington, one of his most trusted targets in the slot in this situation. Looking for him, finds him. One of the nicest stories of USC football last year to me was this. Just with all the hoopla around Jordan Addison and all these new people coming in, Todd Washington emerged. He was the second most targeted receiver for USC last year. Steady, trustworthy. It's what you want as a quarterback. The wideout, you know he's going to be in the spot you're hoping to be at. From disaster <laughs> to sheer joy. Well, the secondary saw the fumble too, so they started to move towards the line of scrimmage. Taj Washington, he knows better. He just keeps running vertically. Caleb Williams' eyes are up. The ball is up. Points are up. Touchdown. Longest touchdown pass of Caleb Williams' career, 76 yards. And it's an interesting, it's an interesting interpretation of not giving up on a play, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know as a wideout when you got number 13 as your quarterback, just keep yeah. running, keep running. They do. Caleb sees it as well as anybody. Launches it. No defenders near. Taj Washington, 14-7. Caleb Williams. 
Talking and smiling. Starting 23. Much differently than he finished 22, the big hope. And it's something we talked to Lincoln about yesterday was, you know, look what hampered USC. As much as anything down the stretch last year, Caleb Williams was hurt. Yeah. The hamstring injuries. And uh, was that a, yep, that was a fair catch signal. Wasn't sure if that was interpreted as such. Fair catch signal. Well, here's a most appropriate 76 fueled moment. Well, what happens is the safety, Chase Williams, a former USC Trojan, saw the ball on the ground, so he drives towards the defensive line. And Taj Washington continues to drive towards the goal line. Caleb Williams picks it up on the bounce. The athlete that he is, kind of like a shortstop, doesn't throw it in the dirt, doesn't throw it away, throws it for the longest touchdown of his storied career here at USC. 76 on the pass. And so San Jose State comes out at the 25-yard line. Take a little body blow on that what looked to be a busted play and winds up being a six-pointer. And Kyrie Robinson is dropped. Seeing uh, a little bit of number 90 in this first half, aren't we, Yogi? Yeah, you're feeling his presence. I thought Alex Grinch told us something really, really impressive yesterday. He said, when it's run, it should look like blitz from our defense. That was the first snap that it looked like blitz, but it was just run just from the defense. Yeah. So what you're saying is getting off the ball. Getting off, trusting right. your eyes and right. getting to that gap. You're exactly right, playing downhill. Isaac Chernigan was in the backfield. He flexes out. Second and 10 for San Jose State. Chernigan, they get the lineman out there to block for him. No, but fighting through. That's Tackett Curtis. Tackett Curtis from Louisiana. I'm not sure how to say it. it's M-A-N-Y. I don't know if you say many or many, but it's it's actually Western Louisiana. He's actually closer to Dallas than to New Orleans. Well, what a, I mean, they just, the constant theme you hear about certain players is that you can't teach him the things he just <laughs> is instinctive with. Third and nine. Ooh, backside hit. Cordero, I think, is okay. As he got popped by Jamil Muhammad. Here we go! They call it the rush end position for a reason. Here comes the rush at the top of the screen. From the backside, Curtis almost right there on the front side. And quite simply, they didn't have that productivity last year. And they didn't have those players yeah. last year that we just saw making that play. All right, punt by Weir, Zachariah Branch. Nice job. Boy, there's a, a glimpse of what the Trojans believe was one of a bushel full of special players. All right, we're in week zero. Next week, we're going to have a game for you Thursday night from Tempe. Jalen Rashada getting the starting quarterback job at ASU. And then Saturday, We'll be starting off in Austin. We'll finish in Tucson. Yogi and I'll be right back here at the Coliseum for the USC Nevada game. Tell you what, Jade Rashada, this is one of the most talked about recruits in recent history in the era of NIL. But we went to training camp at Camp T, and you could see the arm talent. Wasn't sure if he was going to win the job. A week later, he did, and he'll get that nod next week. With all the terrific returning quarterbacks, we do have some Interesting stories of new quarterbacks. And there's Marshawn Lloyd on the carry. Oregon State will start next Sunday, a week from tomorrow, at San Jose State. They have DJ Wongalele as their new starter. Yeah, and all eyes are on this game from their coaching staff for obvious reasons. I, I think DJ's got a chance to be so special in this league. Only three rush, so Caleb Williams doing a lot of dancing. Now moving, and eventually just throw it down low, just below the knees, not Boy, held. Trey Jenkins on the pressure. Marshawn Lloyd, the intended receiver. You know, a big drill that USC did in the spring and this fall with Caleb Williams, was just making him stay in the pocket, even when things broke down. 
That was an example right there on the play, trying to still be a passer versus the runner. But interesting mix up on the defense again, Yogi, only three rush. Now they bring four and a half or so, and Branch is open. Between the numbers and the, and the hash, and it's a first down at the San Jose State 31. That's a nice job of Caleb Williams because he's getting a spy from Jordan Pollard, the linebacker, and opens up a window for Branch. All right, well, Williams got some and tried to give it to Branch for more. Third time they ran that play. It's a version of the triple option. Caleb Williams is such a threat, and every defender is taught when he starts to scramble, go find a wideout. They call it plastering. Go plaster yourself to somebody downfield. Well, when you do that, he can keep running, and then he's got this little outlet that he did right there. We saw it in the first quarter. We saw it right there. It's funny. He extends plays. He doesn't have that. He doesn't jump out as an athlete to you, does he? No. He doesn't remind me of Kyler Murray. No, no. Maybe. Marshawn Lloyd gets a number first down. That's why you, when you read, and we all are guilty at some point of playing this game, the comp game, yeah. you hear Mahomes' name a lot. Different type of play. Yeah. Dramatically, uh, in, in my opinion. Caleb's so strong. Well, that, absolutely. Yeah. Pass there is caught by Hudson. That's what we were talking to Brent Brennan about this week, and he mentioned exactly what we saw last year. As you hit that guy, you can't bring him down. He's so physically imposing. He added some really good weight this offseason where Mahomes has that point guard element to him. Caleb, I don't think he's he's like that. Ooh, Lloyd had a good shot at him in the backfield. Jordan Pollard just missed him for San Jose State. And Lloyd's going to have a first and goal for the Trojans. There's some movement on this offensive line. You know, Justin Dietrich, he's here for another year. He's been around for a long time. This is his 36th game of his career. He moved to center. Did that last year. Remember the back half of the title game? And then, of course, the bowl game. But there's some shuffling up on the offensive line. They shuffled some guys today as well. All right, double back. Marshawn Lloyd, near side, Austin Jones, far side. From the nine. And it's Lloyd trying to cut back and does spin nicely and drives his way to game four. You know, Caleb Williams, he really wants to get better in the situational elements of football. This is it. But you looked as that snap began, you thought you had single coverage with Dorian Singer on the top. But as he waited in his cadence, he saw double coverage coming over the top. So they handed the ball off. He's got some of those freedoms at quarterback as he's evaluating the defense in this scheme. All right, Singer up top, Hudson down below. Quentin Joyner is now the back to the right of Caleb Williams. And Joyner gets it down low again. There's Parham, one of the inside backers for San Jose State. So two runs, get it down to the three. And a third down decision coming for USC. Jude Wolf is coming in the game. It's going to give USC a, a too tight end alignment. I like Singer at the top. Man to man coverage. He can win on a slant right here. Austin Jones, the back. And right inside, Austin Jones to the goal line and in. Touchdown, USC. Keep an eye on Michael Tarquin there at right tackle, the transfer from Florida, keeping his hands inside long enough for Jones to find the end zone. So four possessions, three touchdowns. Not bad. No. Two long drives and one improv play. And Dennis Lynch tacks through the point, so 
three and a half remaining in the opener, and the Trojans opening up a little bit of breathing room on this early Saturday evening. I'll have our Pac-12 halftime report presented by Bear, Ashley Adams, and Nigel Burton. Max Brown will all be there talking about quarterbacks, of course. Look ahead to Florida, Utah. And it, real good opener for the Utes coming up. You see, they had a game in Dublin today. Yeah. Had so many friends. Come on, Irish people will yeah. go to Dublin. My friend Jameson went over, class of 82. And, uh, and he said Sam Hartman was taking shots all over the field. First game as the Irish quarterback. I liked it. That'll be fun. It'll be fun to track where these new QBs are all over college football. They fielded at the 11-yard line. Shorter kick. I got to say, it's, it's fascinating. I. We were asking Brent Brennan this the other day. I am completely fascinated by the strategy. Every attempt that the rule makers make to take the kickoff out of the game, coaches want no part of it. And even Brent was talking about, I asked him, would you rather have your guy just bash the ball in the end zone and take the return man out of the game? Or do they said, if I get hang time, that's what I want. And that's exactly what you just saw, a hang time kick. Yeah. It, is, it has been fun to watch the different strategies yeah. with these new rules. Yeah. Including the one in this game. Yeah. The new rules. So both sides up saying it was USC kicking off. But my point is that seems to be the norm now. Yeah. And will out open space there and run. That's a nice story for San Jose State. Nick Nash, who was a quarterback for the Spartans his first couple of years, made the move last year to wide receiver and blossomed so much this year that Basically, Brent Brennan and, and a couple of the staff said he's become the go-to guy for Chevin Cordell. Yeah, and a nice job there, man-to-man -man coverage against Tackett Curtis on a crossing route. I keep finding ways to get him involved in this passing game. Inside get there to Conley. And that's... Keon Bars, first time we've called his name. Another addition, one of six players, six people on the defensive line for USC now in this rotation. All came from other Power Five schools. This entire lineup right in front of us. Bars, of course, an Arizona player. And that one is juggled and held by Olsen. Short game to the 44. You know, if I'm San Jose State right now, I want to work in between the hashes a little bit. I think you can attack some of the inexperience of Tackett Curtis or the aggressiveness of he and Cobb. Nice focus there from Olsen. But I'd be working my slot receivers as much as I can. Crossing routes, you just got to hold up long enough. So the Spartans need four. sideline and that's a nope almost a heck of a catch Conley, the not team. held by Conley running a wheel route against Tackett Curtis and they got the matchup they wanted it just didn't leave enough Ooh. room and then the drop we are always talking those real wheel routes to leave about three yards so the ball can fade you and you'll still be in bounds when you catch it And so, USC's yes, going to get a shot here with plenty of time. Minute 42. And the half is Weir bangs a deep punt. That one's going to bang. Wow, he crushed that ball. So it doesn't uh, help the field position game very much. USC will come out with a touchback on a 56-yard kick. And a chance for Caleb Williams to do this again. By the way, we haven't mentioned... It may come into play here right now. The new rule in college football this year. One man's opinion. I think you can guess who that man is. Long overdue. Uh, the clock not stopping on first downs any longer until the last two minutes of the half. Last two minutes of the game. Yeah, I think it's going to benefit, obviously, the teams that run the ball well. The Oregon States, the Utahs, the Oregons. And it's going to be really interesting at the end of games. Do you have an opportunity to make comebacks like TCU did last year in the Big 12 yes. title game? Exactly. I think it's going to eliminate that. And it's going to take... Projected 
About four, eight to 12 minutes off of the entirety yeah. of the game. Well, the, the track will do the first few weeks is how many fewer plays are yeah. running again. I think that's going to be the significant issue, right? Austin Jones. He takes the ball from Caleb Williams. Runs into a big pile. They push it for a couple of yards, but that's it. And that's the difference between Saturday football and Sunday football. If you just look at back when they used to print box scores, uh, you could just see the number of plays. It was always much, on an average, much fewer plays on a Sunday game. Ooh, Williams, nice sidestep. Flag. So this is going to come back. You know, that was a good pressure there by Sawani Toya off the Spartan front and likely a hold. Holding, holding, offense, number 79, 10 yard penalty, replay second down. Talk about the things he wanted to improve upon. Watch the subtle movement in the pocket. They call this over one, up one. Over one, up one. He's still there. Look at his eyes. They're downfield the yeah. whole time. He's not looking to scramble. A year ago, early on in his campaign as a starter here, that was the case. That's a great call, Yogi. That's a, that's the quarterback. You, your, your old coach loved it so much. That's exactly what Russell Wilson did. Yeah. He'd move all over the place. Never stop looking down the field. Much to my chagrin sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Austin Jones, this him as the back. The laundry throw to Mario Williams, his first touch. That's Spartans nice defend that well. Tell you what, if San Jose State can get out of this without giving up any points, I mean, what an impressive job here. This is a critical well, down here because yeah, SC gets the ball coming out. I would suspect Brent Brennan would take a timeout. Yeah, yeah. He did. It took a few more seconds than he would have preferred San to Jose do that. State. The third and 14. 30 seconds. All right, back for a third season is Touchdowns for Equality. It's presented by Pacific Premier Bank and Paycor. Each partner again donates $100 to the National Urban League and the United Negro College Fund for every Pac-12 touchdown this season. The first two years, we've raised almost $170,000. Well, well done. So 42 seconds, and the San Jose State, if they can make a stop here, should they make an immediate timeout, unless it's incomplete, uh, and get the ball back, see if they can strike before halftime. Yeah, yeah. USC does get the ball first in the third quarter. That makes an extra possession here more important for San Jose State. So right now, Ted, this is going to be a critical call from Derek Odom. He's a DC at San Jose State. I would imagine they're going to have a spy on Caleb Williams. But when you do that, and if he sits in the pocket, you take somebody out of making a drop in coverage. So it's one of these two linebackers. They've been the spies. Jordan Pollard, Brian Parham, the two backers. Quarterbacks return who threw for over 3,000 yards a year ago in this league. How about Bo Nix? Poster all over the country. Where's the next one? New York, Dallas, who knows? And Cam Rising, hope we get to see him against Florida if he is fully cleared to play. But you look at those quarterbacks, the six coming back. Then you add in Shador Sanders, DJ Uyunglele. The group, Ted, you, you've been doing this a little longer, a little longer than I have. But ever seen a group in this league? Not the, de not the numbers, yeah. the depth. It's just, that's what's was such an exceptional turnaround last year, and that's why there's so much excitement for beginning today through Thanksgiving every Saturday. And as you were touched on early, the conference, it was just a mess last year, sadly. The scheduling was a mess. And this year, the top teams are all playing each other <laughs> for the most part. All right, third and 14. Zachariah Branch in the slot at the top. That was that's a cover sack, isn't it? <laughs> and, and as you referenced, also a teaching sack. Caleb Williams, stay in the pocket, stay in the pocket. Trey Smith and Brian Parham eventually get Williams, and San Jose State is going to Time get out. the ball. San Jose State as yes, they take their second timeout. They're going to get the ball. Should get it near midfield here. Yeah, well, it's a delayed blitz. 
on the spy. And par M number six, he just keeps working and working. Caleb can't really climb up into the integrity of the pocket. He's at this drop point, and it just suffocates him. Nothing there. And if you're San Jose State, you're saying to yourself, hey, we gave up a big busted play for a 76-yard touchdown. But I mean, we feel pretty good about what we did defensively as a unit and getting off the field on that drive. I thought with USC getting it back with a buck 30 and change, perfect opportunity for their two-man in offense to go boom, boom, boom with all the weapons they have and score before the half. Went the other way. Nice job from Brent Brennan's team. That was the first negative play for USC. Just to finish that point, you know, USC won the conference season last year. But, you know, they didn't play Oregon or Washington. Yep. And Washington didn't get to play Utah or USC. And that's what I'm saying. It was just it was just a mess last year. As, as it came down to the end of the season, there was just not enough games between the top teams. That should be remedied this year. And that's, yeah. I think, everybody's better served for that. Yeah, it's, it's better for the sport. And hopefully down south, they pay attention to that, too. Nice to see Georgia and Bama in the regular season once. <laughs> exactly. More than once a decade. Yeah. All right, Eddie Chaplitsky. And his first game is a Trojan going to kick this out of the end zone. They have the full 15 yard depth. But USC takes a timeout just prior to that snap. There is no play. Please reset the time play clock to 25 seconds. If I'm San Jose State, I'm coming after this. You don't want to, in my eyes, in this game, why play it safe? And I get it, you don't want a penalty and don't get the possession. But I'm coming after it. It's a tight kick. The kickers, the punter is going to want to go one step and get it out. See if you can get a little penetration. And then you're going to get the ball more than likely on your side of the 50. What a beautiful building. We were there on Wednesday. Spent a lot of time in the new football building at the stadium, the longtime stadium for San Jose State. But it's just a great gift that has opened up now for Brent Brennan and a staff that, is, again, they've stayed together seven years. There are not too many staffs in San Jose State in the history of the school that can say that. And Chaplitsky bangs one out. Boy, a nice punt forcing the fair catch, but it's at the USC 45-yard line. It's a nice job, 40 yards with hang time. D.J. Harvey on the fair catch for San Jose State, but the Spartans have 27 seconds and a timeout. And again, a first down at this point will also stop the clock. So enough time to maneuver. And, I mean, at the very least, get themselves a chance to kick three. I, I keep an eye right here. Nick Nash, yep. we talked to Chevin Cordero. He raved about his roommate, one of his favorite targets. Going against Damani Jackson. Three up top. Robinson flares out. And Cordero wings one in the middle. And there's the point we're just making. That's a catch that will stop the clock for the moment. And he's going to try to spike it. Yeah. Malachi Miller on the catch. Well, 16 seconds and a timeout. San Jose State right now at least has a chance to kick. This is really impressive from the quarterback, Shevin Cordero. He wants to go to his left, who his roommate comes off of it to Miller on the dig route. Perfect eyes in the progression. He saw Nick Nash being double teamed from Kalen Bullock at the safety at the top. Came off it, no problem. Oh, here comes big pressure and Cordero throws high and incomplete. So Alex Grinch mixed up there and brought everyone. I always felt this way. We've talked about it over the years. Coordinators, especially defensive coordinators, go to their personality in crunch time. Alex Grinch's personality, pretty aggressive. He is not going to sit back and allow Chevin Cordero to do what he did two plays ago. All right, again, San Jose State has a timeout, so they can use the field here. And it's going to be man-to-man -man at the bottom of the screen with Nash against Jackson. Late blitz coming off the side. Throw to the end zone. It's a touchdown. Well, there it is. Cordero to Nick Nash. 
Huge lift for the Spartans. Ted, I think this is a busted coverage. Jackson follows the tight end. Nobody has Nash down the sideline. An easy hole shot from Shevin Cordero. Twenty-eight yard scoring play. Halverson to kick the point here for San Jose State. What a lift. USC unable to move the ball. And in fact, that sack that Caleb Williams took on third down pushed them back into the end zone to punt. And the Spartans take advantage. So take a look at this. We're thinking it's man to man coverage right here. But on the snap, Jackson just drifts inside. And there's no coverage here. I mean, this is easy. I don't know if he anticipated Max Williams running with Nick Nash, but he didn't. Max Williams' eyes are in the backfield right there at number four. I mean, Chevin Cordero, this is 49th game played. He made that read in his fourth game played. That was easy pitch and catch for him and a huge play. Just the second touchdown catch for Nick Nash in his career. Again, he was a quarterback until last year. Also, unfortunately, well, that USC has to hope that's a good sign that Eric Gentry is able to get up and get off because, man, is last thing in the world. He needs another hurt. Nick Nash from Irvine, and that's something Brent Brennan was, because of the experience they had here two years ago, he was very open talking with us about the fact that he knew so many of his players from Southern California. Many of them came to games here when they were young guys. And uh, can't get caught up in it. You can't get caught up in the horse running around the field. The, the, the fight on song you're going to hear 50,000 times. Just the whole aura of playing here. And Hey, two years ago, Two years ago, the game here, now again, it was a different coach, different time for USC. It was 13 to 7 going to the fourth quarter two years ago. Short kick, that is a fair catch signal. And uh, San Jose State, uh, knowing that USC gets the ball to begin the second half, that touchdown was huge for them. Huge, huge. And look, we talked to both staffs in advance of this game. Brent Brennan said, look, our guys, to your point, if they start making it about themselves and coming back home, we got no chance. If they make it about the team and we can settle in and deal with some adversity, we got a shot. Yeah. And for Lincoln Riley, he said, I want to find out what happens when we're in adverse situations. Well, we're going to find out in this second half because this is not what a lot of USC fans and I imagine what the USC roster thought the score would be against San Jose State at halftime. Now opening game last year different team here it was Rice and the Trojans hung 66 up. So that last minute of the half changes the mood pretty dramatically doesn't it? Yes it does. These locker rooms are going to be interesting to see and feel what comes out of them in about 15 minutes. Yeah. Pretty good offensive half for USC, but the Spartans get the last score, so it is a 21-14 USC lead. And from the Coliseum now, send it back to our studio for the halftime report presented by Bear with Ashley Adams. Hey, back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Seven points, the USC lead at the half. And as they stay with that wonderful late touchdown. And it's interesting, Yogi, because we're dealing with a new era in college football related to the clock. And you see offensive numbers, not, nothing really gaudy in that first half. I think the biggest number in the first half to me, there were a total of 65 plays run. A total. That is a Sunday half. Not what we've been accustomed to on Saturday. Yeah, you could feel the game just moving, and then you saw the limited possessions from USC, yeah. and they got to find a way to continue to protect Caleb Williams because the pocket's just collapsed a few times on key downs, and it stalled out drives, and all of a sudden, 
USC offense isn't on yeah. the field, and a big advantage, San Jose State. Yeah. Well, USC had five possessions on offense. They scored three touchdowns. How about the defense? Well, the front seven, it was a total facelift. We talked about to start the game, and you could feel it. Jamel Muhammad, how about this? Huge play in the first half, but it's the back end that has struggled a little bit. This is man-to-man -man coverage on a third and 22. None of the defensive backs feel the run from Chevin Cordero. So they never even peek back. It allows him to convert this, leads to a touchdown. Then, of course, the touchdown before the half ended. Damani Jackson ends up playing the safety, rotates from quarter position. He's out of position. If he's going to play that deep half, he's got to have the ability to put his foot in the ground, stay square, and be able to cover both of those things. That's what safety's doing that defense. It was a bust by the defense and Alex Grinch and gave more life to San Jose State here to kick off the third. The other element of the first half that I think has been overlooked, zero turnovers. Zero. And USC defense last year thrived especially the first half of the year thrived it's Grinch's thing a big play defense right well, it didn't, didn't happen the first time you talk to players at SC and they always watch this turnover reel of the opponent right mm -hmm. before the game there's not a lot of them from San Jose State last yeah. year I mean Chevin Cordero he only had five interceptions or six interceptions all year and two of them were in the bowl game like they don't mm -hmm. turn it over either and to your point SC hasn't created those explosive defensive plays all right, so we'll see how the second half plays out. Relique Brown is the deep return man. As San Jose State kicks it off here to get the second half going, and this will be the big leg kick into the end zone for the touchback. And again, offensively, I think, depending on what standard you're going to hold people to, if you get five possessions and they haven't scored three touchdowns, pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I think this is going to be fun for USC, right? And Lincoln Riley talked about it with us yesterday. How do we handle adversity? How do we make sure we just focus on us? And if they continue to move the ball and score at that rate, they're going to be in a great position all season. It's the first half. No need to get crazy, but they need to come back and clean up a few things. And we'll see how they do it here in the third. Austin Jones starts as the running back. And this would be a help because USC did not run the ball very well in the first half. They had 74 rush yards total, 37 of them on one run by Jones. Yeah, and they were rotating a bunch of players on that defensive line, specifically on the interior. So we'll see that again here to start off the third quarter with this group out front. Yeah. Last year, USC averaged 5.1 a run play, which was better than the last six years for USC. Lincoln Riley said he want, he thought the number should be higher. <laughs> Second down, five receivers. Middle throws caught by Dorian Singer for a first down. And there's the gamble, right? You're going to bring pressure. You're going to allow Caleb Williams to have his own line pick it up. They do exactly that. Dorian Singer, same route, he's going to touchdown on Ted. Post route, he flattens it against man coverage. That's too easy. Williams now 9 of 12, passing for 134. But again, that was the one big 76 yarder to Taj Washington. Deep shot here. For great body adjustment, but Kyron Hudson loses it when he hits the ground. Kyron Hudson against Javion Cole. How about the throw? Give him a chance. High points, it does that. But as he tries to tuck it, him and the ground meet, and the ball pops out. Perfectly thrown. Just couldn't hang on with that right hamstring. Instead, they got Gino Quinones at left guard and Mason Murphy at right tackle. So another different offensive front five. Now Spartans drop back into cover there. Again, the mix-up 
by Derek Odom on D. He only rushed three, but the pass zipped through Mario Williams, and it's third and ten. Don't see too many drops from this receiving core. Well, right now, San Jose State's defense stops here. You can really feel a little unease here in the Coliseum. Nice catch, but a better tackle. Singer made the catch, but a good stop by Kenyon Reed to keep Singer from first down yardage. And now Lincoln Riley has a call to make here. It's going to be a short fourth. Oh, he's going for it all day long. You know, this offense is trying to find a rhythm. And I think continuing to work the outside receivers might be the way to go in some of these intermediate routes. Keep an eye in the slot. Mario Williams at the top. Fourth and three. Zachariah Branch slot to the bottom. Quick throw. Mario Williams hangs on to this one, and the Trojans convert. San Jose State, they're going to hate watching this one back as USC gets to the line of scrimmage, but they just didn't carry and run with Williams. He's wide open. 23 yards there. Quick pullback by Caleb. There's a scallop there, and it pulled, pitched to Zachariah Branch. Watch the previous play right here. Nobody's going to run with Mario Williams. Wide open. They're lucky that's not a touchdown. Corner eventually falls in on it to make the tackle. Caleb Williams saw it all day. So first down at the 11 of San Jose State. A couple of important pass plays, most importantly, the fourth down conversion. The officials allowing San Jose State to match a late sub by USC. And it's Caleb on the keeper. And Williams is racked up. He gets a couple. Well, mark him at the eight. He got hit hard right on the thigh, too. All right, season's officially underway, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, well, is, that a Charlie, is that a Charlie horse kind of hit? I think so. Rolling, rolling, and dumps it out to tight end Lake McCree. He's upended, but he's close to a first. And they love working the line of scrimmage. I mean, Makai Lemon, the true freshman, he's blocking downfield, and McCree's got to make sure he stays behind the line of scrimmage. A nice job of executing a nice tackle here to make it third down. And all the late changing again, so San Jose State can match. That's why you see the official standing over the ball. Trojans have to get just shy of the one. Play clock running. Williams has to snap it, does just in time, and gives it to Jones who walks in for the USC score. That's nice situational awareness by Caleb Woods. USC's ship is changing late, and so San Jose State can match, and that's on the offense. That play clock was right down to the end. Yeah, he did a nice job of just making sure everybody on the line yeah. and the tight ends, two tight ends on that formation, were able to communicate who had who. All right, Lynch. Thanks through his fourth point after. And that's the third field drive of the game for USC. Well, the fourth down conversion kept the drive going. Mario Williams right down the seam makes up for the drop. A few plays previous. And then how about Lake McCree at tight end, seal on the edge. Austin Jones finding a touchdown. All right, Austin Jones. Two touchdowns today. Had five last year became uh, the lead back near the end of the year after the injury to Travis Dye. All 
right out of bounds kick there by USC. The receiving team has elected to place the ball at the 35 yard line. Not helpful. First down. Go through all that stuff we were talking about hang time and trying to play the field position game, and then you just you get a shank. <laughs> and now San Jose State gets the ball at the 35. Curious for San Jose State if they come out here on this drive and how many different shifts and motions they use. Because I, I think that was to their benefit in the first half. Trying to make USC identify, communicate, see if they can create a couple more opportunities down the field. Well, was, yeah, Spartans have to answer now. They had the, the momentum play right going into halftime. Now need to answer USC's play. Play action. Big shot. And bumping down the field, but no flags. Charles Ross. The receiver, Damani Jackson, the cover. It's good to see Damani Jackson out there, Ted. This is a guy who was tied for the fastest human in all of <laughs> California high school track and field in the 100 meter dash. Took a couple years to recover from a knee injury. Finally back at full strength. You saw the speed there. One. Ten to five. Yeah, it's good. Pretty good. That's good. What was your best? Not ten to ten four. Come on. The Eleven to five. <laughs> Come lucky. Underneath throw, and that's going to get San Jose State a first down. I would keep coming back to the well on the crossing yeah. routes. If you can have the time as Chevin Cordero, the quarterback. When they're crossing routes, their receivers are getting to a depth where they're forcing USC's linebackers to go over the top of the route. See the linebacker how far away, the safety how far away, DB Jacoby coming how far away he is from the receiver. It's because of that mesh point. So Charles Ross gets the first down to the San Jose State 46. Kyrie Robinson, the running back. And he's going to run a counter and get outside. He's able to turn. And Robinson takes it down close to a first. Sierra Wright finally runs him out. It was the inside backers, both Cobb and Curtis, that were chasing him. Yeah, we know how fast those two are. That says a lot about Kyrie Robinson keeping that edge. Well, pretty good offensive minds for San Jose State. You know, we told you about Brent Brennan. Kevin McGiven, the offensive coordinator, was with Brennan. They were on the Oregon State staff for a long time. And they have another very, very smart mind as a, an analyst in Terry Malley. And Cordero throws it away. Terry Malley, part of a great football family. His father was the legendary coach at Santa Clara. We have a flag down in the secondary, way back in the secondary, which usually means that. Holding, holding yeah. defense number four. So it's a good, good flag for San, er, for San Jose State gets him a first down. I'll tell you what, that's the best thing that could have happened yeah. to USC on that because you'll watch the running back here, Kyrie Robinson. He's gonna be wide open on a wheel route, but Cordero gets flushed. Can never see him. Look, uh, nobody's touching him, Ted. <laughs> it just feels like those are the kind of plays when quarterbacks get out and run. That's when you get the holding in the secondary. Yeah, right? exactly right. Quali Connolly now the running back for the Spartans. They're at the 35 of USC and Chevin Cordero doesn't like something. So. San Jose State. And Michael Molinar smiles. He loves that when quarterbacks call timeout because he doesn't have to. Welcome back, and it's good to see number two out there, Ted. Romello Height, we called the opener last year. He got injured, the transfer from Auburn. Didn't play the rest of the year. And was out of spring, he was working his way back. He's a guy they got high hopes for playing that defensive end position. That actually makes seven defensive linemen who play for USC, seven who have all come in from Power Five schools. Cordero just wisely there gets rid of the ball. That's something we did. You, you brushed on it, Yogi, but it's a good part about Cordero's game. Only six picks all last year, and a couple of them came in the bowl game they played up in Boise. Yeah, he, he does not 
He does not force things. Yeah. He's he's has the understanding of when to take a risk, when not. Really high percentage throws for the most part. Right there, a great great example. Just just throw it away. Played uh, up in Boise on the great blue field up there in a wonderful stadium. Threw for 366 in the Tater Tots Bowl. Attacking Curtis with the play there. So right here on this third down, Ted, I am working the middle of the field again, crossing rounds. SC is probably going to bring some pressure. You got to pick it up, but if you do, you got a chance for a big play in between the hashes for San Jose State. Keep an eye on number four, yeah. Charles Ross, is right this, there. Is this two plays for nine yards? Yeah. Oh yeah. This four down territory for Brent Brennan all day. Whoa, Cordero, disastrous. And is there a loose football first time in the game? The ball's been on the ground. The play, the loss of yardage is devastating for San Jose State. Wow, this is all Solomon Bird at the bottom of the screen just working. Kyrie Robinson, great hands to get off, tackle the football. Yep. And it was just a long, slow developing play. Charles Ross ran a post corner. It might have been there if there was protection, but there was nothing. Shevin Cordero had nowhere to go. What a play from Solomon Bird. The only saving grace, I think Carmona, the tackle yeah. may have been the one that fell on the football. So it was a fumble, but recovered. 22 yard loss on the play. Zachariah Branch. And this is what USC, they have a handful of people that can be electric in the return game. Zachariah Branch leading him in the punt return, sets up USC near midfield with a two touchdown lead. Here's our old trapper beefy moment. Solomon Bird living up to the, the buildup. Great progress. Spring and fall camp. Huge play here. Yeah, he's got a chance to be one of the more dominant edge rushers in this league. Perfect technician with the hands. And that was really the first big time play we've seen this defense make. You got so accustomed to the turnovers last year. You could argue that was as big as a play as they've had all evening long. So now the Trojans, after the good punt return by Zachariah Branch, start just shy of midfield. 35 yard return. Marshawn Lloyd, the running back. Gonna get out there. With Mannheim starting on the block, and Lloyd uses that to get a first down. Little screen, Marshawn Lloyd picks up a nice block from Monheim. Brennan Rice downfield as he gets right to the line of scrimmage to go again. And Williams just, ooh, whoa, that one too close for comfort. You know, when Caleb Williams has gotten out of the pocket, outside, of course, the play where the ball was on the ground, they scored a touchdown, San Jose State's done a nice job of looking up wide receivers, finding them so there yeah. isn't a lot downfield off schedule for Caleb Williams. The passing game for SC has had their most success when he drops back, hits his drop, and then has found Dorian Singer, Taj Washington, Mario Williams in rhythm. That's a good call. That's that's the word rhythm. Hasn't been as much of that. An right, option run here, and Caleb has to keep it. And San Jose State strings that out. It was a short side play. Caleb ends up all the way there for back the back side of the San Jose State sideline, but that's going to be a long third for USC. Trey Smith there. I haven't seen Caleb Williams do a lot of this, and I'm glad he came up okay yeah. running into those benches. They don't feel good. I see showing a, a lot of different things they, than they didn't do a year ago. The option's been one of them. Yes. And they haven't established a, a steady ground game at all.
There's a good run by Lloyd. Breaking tackles, Marshawn Lloyd. And he didn't step out until he got down to the 25, and that's a USC first down. It's a really nice job of setting up blocks from Marshawn Lloyd. Watch him hesitate right there, and then boom. Cuts right through it, runs right through an arm tackle, uses a stiff arm. I mean, we've met him. He is a load of a human being. Zachariah Branch. And there's the freshman's first USC touchdown. Sometimes you see freshmen make little mistakes. Branch doesn't, and by that I mean he's got to stay behind the line of scrimmage, Ted. He does a great job of doing that, and then you see the north and south, boom, foot down, and that is what was talked about all spring, all training camp, and congrats, young man, your first of what we probably will see of many touchdowns <laughs> in your career. Younger brothers, older brother Zion, missed last year with a knee. He's a secondary player for the Trojans. Well, it wasn't a turnover, but a big defensive play by Solomon Berg has tilted this corner heavily to USC. Yeah, and that's the story of SC a year ago defensively. Big plays leading to points the other way. It happens again to the freshman, Zachariah Branch. Whew, he is a blur, 35-14. Uh, yes, Tommy Trojan right in the center of the USC campus. Miles Galore, a couple of freshmen there. Jacoby Lane, 89, and Zachariah Branch. Now the impact of freshmen, Yogi, know, in this first game, he's got to stand straight for USC at their ridiculously deep wide receiver position. Not seen very much of Brendan Rice in this game. Relief Brown has moved. He's a full-time receiver now. I'm not sure he's been out. He's been out for a scrimmage play at all. Maybe yeah, a couple. Yeah, a couple snaps in the first half. And, and we asked Lincoln Riley about that exact yeah. thing. How are you going to deal with it? And he goes, from day one, we just have to be honest with the players. I mean, we're going to play the best guy. I mean, it was 50-50. Don't be mad if it's not you, because then you're leaving it up to us. Last year, I remember we, we went to a practice and the USC would come at you in waves. The waves are bigger this year. Yeah, they are. Ooh, and almost. And almost for Damani Jackson. He's so athletic. I mean, he looks exactly how you're supposed to. You see his patience at the line of scrimmage. Then he gets his eyes right back to the quarterback, saw the ball out. Dante Williams works with the corners in the secondary. He's so excited about this position group and their potential because they didn't get a bunch of transfers there. They just kept developing. Cordero using the wide side of the field. Really made a good, strong arm throw there, but incomplete to Nick Nash. So these are some of the freshmen to watch. We've, we've seen the two on the left, a bunch, Tatka Curtis, Zachariah Branch, Deuce Robinson had some had a role early on. Jacoby Lane, we saw them in together. But SC in this new era of college football, Ted, where they can recruit some of the best high school players in the country and then be attractive in the transfer portal. It allowed their roster to go from where it was two years ago to where it is today. Deuce Robinson is a wide receiver. We should make that clear. Three wide receivers in that graphic. And the catch is going to be just enough for a first down. Charles Ross on the catch. And one thing we continue to see, A, is San Jose is not going to lay down. And then B, is the rotation. USC rolls another four players out of that defensive front. And every one of them is a transfer. Boy, that's great. USC 
USC's front won that decisively. That was a red wave. Anthony Lucas helping lead the way along with Jamil Muhammad. You know, one of the unsung guys is Jack Sullivan. His name kind of gets lost among the big names on the defense in front of the transfer portal number 99. This is a guy who, this is his 47th game, transferred from Purdue. And I love his degree, Ted. Some guys yeah. get those degrees. Professional flight technician. His, his degree's in aviation. Yeah. Aviation. Oh, great move by Sullivan to get in there, but Cordero betters it with the escape. And Cordero has uh, really Cordero actually probably done a little more damage with his legs so far tonight than his arm. Yeah, you could tell why he was the preseason Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year. He recognized the pressure, he felt the pressure, and he got out of it. Truly a dual threat yeah. player. I mean, just think about Chevin Cordero. He threw for 366 in the bowl game last year. I mean, 366 in a bowl game. Right now, he's at 117, closing in on the end of the third quarter. And it turns out tonight, he's looked a lot at Charles Ross. Ross with another catch. I think we've seen for San Jose State, remember, Justin Lockhart not going tonight, a receiver they were counting on his fifth year. Dominic Mazzotti, their leading tight end from a year ago, who was banged up last year. They expected big things. So two weapons not there for them and Chevin Cordero in the pass game. That's a first down run for Jabari base. The other part about Cordero that we brushed on it again because he did an amazing thing in this era where he sat in high school, thought about transferring because Tua was in front of him, didn't, and the guy that he called for advice, Marcus Mariota, who he used to work out with, also went to the same high school, and Mariota had done the same thing. He had to sit behind a, a high school quarterback and didn't play until his last year. And again, Cordero's legs. This time he gives himself up, avoids the hit after a gain of five. So just imagine playing quarterback right now. You see these big bodies coming right at you in the backfield. You got to put that foot in the ground, not one, not just once, but twice. One cut, another cut, and then get down. Those are instinctual moves by Chevy yeah. Cordero. And to your point, he didn't run from competition That's in right. high school. Yeah. He didn't run from it. He said, no, 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 let me learn. And when I play, let me rip. And that's led to him playing almost 50 games in his college exactly. career. Exactly. And he will play a game later this year at Hawaii. Mountain West game. There's a shot. That's for Nash. And Nash has a touchdown. Terrific catch by Nick Nash. Highlight. Flag down as well. I think it's going to be defensive. Holding on Sierra Wright. Holding defense number 22. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. 32 yards and a gem of a catch by a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Roommates, former teammates in the same position room. And now, not once but twice to your point, finding the end zone. Thirty two yards, second the previous play of a touchdown is under review. Oops, okay, we have our first review of the night. Wonder let's watch the possession of the ball. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> yeah, you can see that okay. one. Yep, you can see that. Let's see. Is there a juggle? Yes, let's see. Now well, that angle doesn't it to me. That angle doesn't help much. Tell you what, I don't see the ball moving. And what you teach receivers is you when you hit the ground, you want that front shoulder. They call it the front shoulder roll. You hit it and you roll so your back is on the ground. Perfectly executed there yeah. by Nash. Oh, 
know if it's the ball they're concerned about. This may be the best view. Let's take a look. Yeah, yeah. Done. Nah, that's can't touchdown. see any can't see any problem there. Can you? No, not at all. Okay. That's touchdown all day long from our vantage point. Well, it was not an expedited review, which we occasionally see as Jeff Dale, the referee, has gone to the monitor at the opposite end of the Coliseum. Nick Nash came into the game with only 11 career receptions. After review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown stands. What a drive. Right, you're thinking, SC, do they just deliver a knockout bun, knockout blow? Brent Brennan's squad says, no, we've been here before. We've been going to bowl games, winning Mountain West championships. Give us the ball. Let's, let's move it. And they just did. And Kyler Halverson. First time place kicking in college, and he's thrown three extra points. That's it. I'll tell you what, Ted. SC brought heat, as Alice Grinch often does. San Jose State picked up the pressure. Look at all those bodies. Nice job by Conley. Cordero stands in it, doesn't flinch. Guy's in his face, delivers it to his roommate. Maybe not the first time, but definitely confirmed the second time for a touchdown. And that's a nice pickup, too, on Curtis, because Conley, slightly bigger running back, a little better shot to yep. stand in against the, the Heat. Yeah, and SE, to your point of coming with waves, they got so many bodies defensively. Number 10 of USC is now number 45, and number 16 of USC is now number 98. You can just tell how fresh they seem mm -hmm. when they're blitzing. All right, well, Zachariah Branch is back on this kick return. Had a good punt return earlier. Taron Scheib is kicking off here into the field. On oh, Branch, that's a great job. What a great job by Zachariah Branch. Freshman to the house. Ninety-six yards. What a great change of gear here. Huh? Oh, yeah, you kidding me, man? First gear to fifth gear. You can't touch me. And then the vision, you can't coach it. Once, and then slowing up, speeding up, back across the field. Haven't seen that in a while at the Collie. And the Collie is rocking because of Zachariah Branch. And what about somebody that can impact the game as a receiver? A punt returner and a kick returner. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> you did run back kicks at Pitt, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't have the fair catch back then. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, the confidence is a freshman. Just slow, slow, yeah. slow. And then, oh, watch this in real speed. I mean, look, it, it is, it is going to be, it's going to sound like big praise, but we haven't seen a guy do something like that on special teams since number five was here. And everybody listening knows who number five was. Zachariah Branch has a big career to see what he can do. But well, that speed, that vision, that confidence, that young, that's what Reggie was doing as a true freshman. Well, this Spot goes, play. Yes. And, and you know, this goes back to my question that we dealt with this week. So he's had a punt return tonight of significance, a 96-yard kick return. Teams on USC schedule find the guy that kicks the ball oh in the back God. of the end zone. Do not let him touch. I'm just saying. It was just. It's just. That's gonna haunt San yeah. Jose State. I mean, that's the. That has to be a message coming out of this yeah. tonight. Oh yeah. I don't know how many opportunities he's gonna get, but I imagine when he does, he won't be fair catching too many of those. Chaplitsky kicking off for USC. Isaac Jernigan from the five one. 
Somebody signaled fair catch there, so that is the play. So that's a buzz kill for San Jose State. Nice play, wonderful catch by Nick Nash, and it comes right back at him in one play. You only have so many opportunities sometimes when you're playing these teams that are just loaded like SC is. But San Jose State, they're trained by Brent Brennan. They are trained. This, this program, they're not going to just fold now because of a big play from SC. They have a lot of experience. They brought back their entire offensive front. Shevin's experienced. The running back is experienced. They need to settle down and see if they can put together a four or five minute drive here and get themselves to the fourth quarter. Little screen set up for Robinson. And Jamil Muhammad breaks it up. He got through the block. And it's a short game. How about Jamel Muhammad? How many guys who go to college as a quarterback end up playing rush end by the end of their career? A few schools later. You know, it's, we had a chance to talk to him after practice this week. He's so impressive. He really has worked at his craft. He loves being here. He's a true veteran presence with this program. And there's the two tight end shift we've seen for San Jose State about a half a dozen times tonight. And Cordero's got somebody right at him. It's Muhammad. There is no pressure. And John Davis right behind him. So two pressure Cordero to break up the play. And, and Ted, it's good to see Eric Gentry back on the field as well. Yes. And on third downs, we've seen him throughout his career have an influence in between the hashes where San Jose State has had success in the past game. Right through right over the blitzer, but USC stops the attempt of Conley to get to the line to gain. Well, it, that, that was an instinctive play by the defense. It was man to man, Eric Gentry and the running back. He saw the running back immediately run that angle route. He didn't flinch one second. You look at that ankle, and he was rehabbing. He looked beautiful in terms of not hesitating and making a play. And just what USC's defense wanted, three and out. And Branch is going to have another chance. Uh-oh. Watch out, San Jose. Watch out. And good pursuit. And look, the guy that we watched in San Jose State practice here, they were saying, man, have you seen a punter cut like that in a while? Weir makes the test. Reminds me of a young Sam Polis in Northwestern. Pac-12 kickoff week is presented by Taco Bell. And brought to you by 76. We're on the driver's side. And by Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Zachariah Branch, freshman Las Vegas, Bishop Gorman High, 96-yard kick return. And earlier in the game, his first USC touchdown as a receiver. And he now, with that 18-yard punt return to end the third quarter, he has 232 all-purpose yards. Which, by the way, is more than Caleb Williams tonight. <laughs> Although Caleb's going to do something about that. Gets a few back on his move here. Trojans play their first three games here. They play Nevada here next Saturday. That'll be up right here on Pac-12 Network again at 3.30. And then two weeks from today, Stanford in their annual early season first conference game. Yeah, the schedule's interesting for them because then they get the bye and then it's nine straight. Lincoln Riley said something to us yesterday that I, he didn't directly say it, but I inferred something. <laughs> and Williams hands McCree, the tight end. Lake McCree, get back to the uh, Riley in a moment, but this is something I think we may see. I wonder if we're going to see more tight ends this year. Yogi, what do you think? Oh, yeah. At USC. Yeah. 
Now they get him to McCree two plays in a row. And the reason I say that, we haven't talked about him tonight, although he is on the sideline, Cliff Kingsbury, joining Lincoln Riley's staff. Cliff Kingsbury is another airy guy, but when he, there he is, when he was in the NFL, he adapted. And why is he wearing a San Jose State shirt? <laughs> Just kidding. It looks like the Spartan head, doesn't it? Yeah. But anyway, he, he, he incorporated some tight end into the offense at Arizona. Marshawn Lloyd. Boy, that hard running. So I, I just, I'm just wondering. That's a speculation on my part. I think it's a huge part of what USC will be doing offensively because of all the weapons they have. Lake McCree is a tight end, but he made that play when he was flexed out. So when he's in the game, what are you calling defensively? Are you playing nickel defense, which would think pass? and you're susceptible to runs? Are you thinking run and then he could flex out and catch the ball? And then I think as the year goes on, here we go seeing some freshmen like Deuce Robinson in the slot at the top, Jacoby Lane at the bottom. What do you can identify all these players as? And that will make it challenging for defenses. Well, first down at the 12. And, ooh. Just out of the reach of Deuce Robinson trying to get another freshman his first. Watch this route. Deuce Robinson is 6'6, 225. He moves like he's 6'1, 205. You know, and this is a guy who signed late at USC, was waiting out the baseball thing, dynamic athlete. We've seen him at the summer literally at Elite 11, Ted. He's putting on clinics, making plays. Yeah. As the year goes on, He's going to be a threat in the red zone. Well, when we were here in the spring, Lincoln Riley was talking to us about how his body had changed. He'd leaned up more, and he had more of a wide receiver look, even though he was labeled a tight end. Well, there's a nice reception, and Brendan Rice gets his first touch of the night for a touchdown. They love this play. Watch Taj Washington 16 right in the middle there with the block that springs him. And when Brendan Rice catches it, he's already moving towards the goal line. Uses his athleticism and big body untouched to the end zone. For USC, one return score, but the offense, six touchdowns. Now, we were talking to Lincoln Riley yesterday, and he made a comment about Caleb Williams. Last year at the end of the year, you know, he got hurt in the championship game, and it was a short week. They played Notre Dame Saturday, and then to come back and play Friday. Now, Utah had the same schedule, so it's not it was not a disadvantage thing other than just pu pushing. So guess what? When you see that schedule, you don't see a game on 11:25, do you? No. That's sir. this game. That's the week zero game. So USC has scheduled themselves a bye week before a potential conference championship game. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see how it plays out because the run that they have, starting with, we'll see what Colorado is, but Arizona, Notre Dame, etc. touch back here and of course the good part of the schedule Yogi's we've touched on earlier this year they all play USC plays Utah they play Washington they play Oregon and of course they play UCLA they have to go to Notre Dame this year for that mid-October game so the second half is going to be challenging yeah it is and, and I love what Lincoln Riley has said and the team has really echoed it um, the longer it goes the better we get and that was a direct reflection of what happened last year late in the season and this is a team that talked that way all off season. It's been the mantra of the locker room, of the program. And I'm sure they're going to echo that today. I mean, it wasn't a pretty first yeah. half. The longer it went, yeah. the better they got. I'll bring something else up here in a minute that we mentioned to Lincoln yesterday. And uh, so run into the line gets a few yards for San Jose State. I asked him about it yesterday. And Yogi's heard me talk about this for eight months because it's a massive flaw in the system that and it applied last year to both USC and to TCU is what benefit 
did those two schools have by playing in their conference championship games? None. Zero. The TCU survived this, to their credit. USC did not. Quick throw to Nash, wrapped up there by USC. And the question that I've asked since, since last January is why would you even play in the conference championship game if you're in the same position this year? Thankfully, this is the last year that that flaw happens. But uh, it's, it's, and it's rough. And Lincoln Riley, when we, I asked him yesterday, and I, he said it's third time in five years yeah. that his last conference game of the season was a no-win game for them. They could only lose. Especially if you do lose, a team that is not playing and is sent home watching and gets in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Broke it up. Nice third down defense there by Christian Roland Wallace, a veteran Arizona Wildcat that came here along with receiver Dorian Singer and Keon Bars. Three Wildcats moved here. Yeah, look, this defense, they want to play press man coverage. Hands on them early, good hands late. Knocking that ball away. And I think as the year goes on, Ted, Christian Roland Wallace's role will continue to expand. Nickel, corner, play guys in the slot, come off the edge. He's got a lot of variance to his game. All right, let's see what Weir does with this punt. Bangs one to the near sideline, angles it. Better, better move there by San Jose State after branches burn them with these returns. Oh, the Santa Monica Pier on this late August night. You know, Ted, with transfers in the portal, also come great stories, and that's exactly what you have with Michael Tarquin. That's his wedding day with his wife Ashley and SC fans, football fans probably know the guy on their right. That's Tony Baselli, yes, his father-in-law. He's playing O-line here, and he learned one or two things Boy, did he. about USC from the guy rocking the same number. All right, it's Miller Moss takes over as the Trojans quarterback. And immediately gets one out to Deuce Robinson. You know, Ted, you talked earlier about Chevin Cordero not leaving. How about Miller Moss not leaving? Yes. You know, it would have been real easy for him to transfer. Not only did he not transfer, he graduated. He's getting his next degree. And oh, by the way, graduated in two years. <laughs> Is that something? <laughs> Darwin Barlow in for the first time tonight for the Trojans, along with the with freshman back Quentin Joyner. This two-back alignment we've seen on a handful of plays, and Barlow gets the carry. So Barlow, who came here a couple of years ago, played quite a bit his first year, but as more people have come here, Barlow hasn't had as many carries, gets 12 yards there. You know, it's great though when you talk to the staff about number 22, they, they rave about his yeah. work ethic, the type of teammate that he is. And, and yet to see it last year in the UCLA game, they needed him to step up, and he did after not really being a featured back through the majority of the season. Travis Dye goes down, all of a sudden he steps up. Broken up, Moss. Ball had a little bit of hang time heading towards Robinson. DJ Harvey covers for San Jose State. You know, it's interesting too about Miller Moss, Ted, is that you know he went through a lot in his high school career because he didn't have a 2020 season. So last year in the opener, he played a lot. But other than that, he hasn't played a ton of football since 2019. And he stuck with it. We talked to him about it after practice, and he said every day in practice, I have to be prepared like mm -hmm. it's a game. And Lincoln Riley makes every day in practice feel like it's a quiz for the exam coming up on Saturday. Joyner gets the carry, and Joyner breaks away. Well, you've seen some flashes tonight, haven't you, on offense? As we referenced, it's not so much the portal on this side of the ball, it's freshmen, a great recruiting group. He's got a different gear. And just from, yeah. from looking at our perch here, 
When he touches the ball out of the backfield, it is a different type of speed through the line of scrimmage to that second layer on the defense. And back at left guard is the young man who started tonight his first game, Alani Noah from Sacramento. A freshman playing and starting on the line in his first game. <laughs> freshman running back, freshman receivers. Yeah, they're, they're rotating pretty good on this offensive line. I'll be curious to see where they net out next week. We call that game against Nevada because Emmanuel Pregnant, he's out there over now on the right guard position. Yeah. I and mean, we've seen a bunch of guys move. Well, there's the first catch for Jacoby Lane. How about this? Mesa, Arizona. Sorry to cut you off, yeah. there, but think Jacoby Lane, Relief Brown, Deuce Robinson. There's a lot of teams in the country. Those three guys run out with the ones. Oh, no. It's, and here we are in the fourth quarter. That's what we're, we're referencing. We had this comment, our conversation last year when we were here for the opener, Yogi. They had three sets of receivers that would likely be, all three sets would have been the number one set for most other teams they play. And it's at least three sets this year. Break up there, intended for Mario Williams. Nice job from Latu. But you know, you know, it's, you, you talk about the receivers here and the the waves that they have. You think about the teams they're going to play. The receivers in Arizona may not have the, the waves and three deep at every spot, but at the top, they're just as good as anybody. You dub Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, just as good. Like the wideouts this year in the Pac-12. Huh. It's football today, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Ooh. Defense. Who wants to play defense? Yeah. <laughs> Off play action. Moss taking a shot. And he's got Robinson with the catch inside the five. Ted, this guy was doing it in high school. Watch him run around. He is not a tight end. Getting on the toes of the DB, putting his left foot in the ground, crossing his face, and look at the high point. He's all 6-6. He got up to probably 9-6 right there. No chance to make a play on Deuce Robinson. When we were here for the spring game, the coaches were telling us that was a three and a half year recruitment of Deuce Robinson here. <laughs> Everybody knew, but again, his, his body was more like a tight end. He's leaned out so athletic now. As Moss with a keeper scores. Little zone read and crashes down. Miller Moss says, yeah, I ate Caleb. Look at me, man. Sure will have some fun with that on the rushing touchdown for the QB of SC. Not named Caleb Williams. Well, there's a sign right there. Number 13, wait, <laughs> give him a little hug. TD hug. Perfect. PAT night for Dennis Lynch. Eight for eight. It's a nice theme, quarterbacks who stay. Yeah. I like that. Well, what's going to be because great? Because we have to treasure those stories when we get them. Well, I, what I love about that drive is there's, there's only yeah. going to be, you know, it, because of the schedule and the back half of what it is for SC, there's going to be so many moments for Miller Moss to show to Lincoln Riley that he could be the guy, right? So you see those guys celebrate all three of the quarterbacks. That's yeah. Malachi Nelson right there, number eight. It's going to be a battle afterwards, and this staff has to evaluate that. And I love sure. the decisions that Miller Moss made on that drive, including to keep it, the confidence to say, I, I can run this in. And you think of those lines as we get set for the full conference to start playing next week. 
talked about the fact that Oregon State has named its new starting quarterback a transfer and Arizona State's new starting quarterback is actually a freshman although he I guess was briefly at another school. I don't know if we count that as a transfer or not. No we count that as. Uh, but uh, Cal uh, Justin Wilcox named Sam Jackson at a TCU as their quarterback. Isaac Jernigan on this return. And clipped out of bounds on the cover. How about these Trojans? Two touchdowns apiece. Austin Jones getting one. Great block from his tight end and his tackle getting two. And then the freshman, Zachariah Branch, ran that play a few times. Got he showcased his ability to get north and south. And then this one, the hesitation, lull you to sleep. And then wake you right up, and this stadium was rocking as he went to the house for the second time in his young career in the opening night. Last freshman, by the way, to return a kick for a touchdown here was a Dory Jackson nine years ago. Nice catch and then spin move after the catch to get yardage. That's Quali Conley out of the backfield with the catch for San Jose State. USC, five possessions in the first half, three touchdowns. They've scored every time they've touched the ball in this half, five touchdowns. That, that's what's going to make them so hard to beat this year because their offense is, is lethal. You know, they could have an average game defensively but still put it on you. And this defense, I, I think they made strides to, from a year ago as we see yeah. them. And toss in, toss in the return game. Yeah. And what this guy's done tonight, over 230 all purpose. But I love those two yeah. guys. They're yeah. they're about business. And Caleb Williams has really put it on himself to be a leader within this team. And, and I would define a leader as making everyone around you better, bringing them to film sessions, hanging out with them off the field, making sure they know what it's like to approach this game with the standard that SC has. And I'm sure he's had a lot of sidebar combos with that young man. Oh, Conley breaks out in the open. And this foot race, he's going to get run down. Well, he will get run down and ganged up from behind. But that's the biggest offensive play of the night for San Jose State. Wally Conley, Jacoby Covington finally was the first man to get to him after a 52 yard run. Yeah, attack at Curtis. Just trying to throw his body in there, missed his gap, but allowed for a big run. So here you are, 525 to go in the game. Well, There's not been a field. turnover tonight. Well, the field they go. You don't see a lot of college games like that. Ooh. And Damani Jackson got a little too close there. Is the ruling and a flag comes down on his cover. Pass interference defense number one by rule that will be placed at the two yard line automatic first down. You really can't. You, you can't. In my eyes, with cornerbacks, Ted, you got to give them as many opportunities as possible. You can't really replicate a game in practice, even though the SC receivers are amazing. But being here, I love how they're just putting Damani Jackson on the island, yeah. trying to get him as many reps as possible. He'll get PIs. That's going to happen. It's part of the rhythm of playing the position. Shevin Cordero, and he has an open man for the Spartan touchdown. Third of the night to Nick Nash. San Jose State does not shut it down. And that is a direct reflection of Brent Brennan and these players. They just keep fighting. They got a phrase called climb the mountain. They talk about all the time in that locker room. Look at Cordero. Eyes downfield the whole time. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Nash runs all the way to his right. Puts his foot in the ground. Comes back. Jackson keeps going. Leaves him there for a touchdown. So Cordero to Nash three times for touchdowns. And 
Alverson adds the point. So just a touch over five to play in the Coliseum. An overwhelming score. This is a mission-minded team. He's the best quarterback my eyes have ever seen. There's the touchdown! His first grab and tug in the books. Hero play! Four, six! Kayla Williams' eyes are up, points are up. Touchdown to the freshman, Zachariah Branch. Woo, he is a blur. So many options, so many weapons. Freshman to the house! A yeah, big play night for the USC offense. And again, they've scored five times. They touched the ball in the second half. All touchdowns in our Pac-12 kickoff week presented by Taco Bell and Zachariah Branch. <laughs> everybody, everybody watching knows who he is now. You've heard the stories about him because he follow football. You've seen it tonight? Whew, have we yeah. ever? Yeah. He will be the start of every special teams meeting. It's like we might see an onside kick right here. Yeah, so that's what is expected. That's what happens, and it stopped. Flag before. Prior to the, to the kick, timeout. USC, their first to the half. All right, prior to the kick, and then there was a flag thrown. So that was interesting, but timeout negates the flag and what do you think uh, Lincoln Riley's initial comments after the game right now five minutes to go what well, do you think I, I think he's gonna really like how this game played out because it didn't start great and you know other than Colorado with Deion Sanders there probably hasn't been more hype for a team all off season. and rightfully so and I think he saw his team have to deal with adversity I'm sure they talked about that at halftime and they didn't flinch. Other than the defense improved in the second half, the offense, to your point, was really impressive all game long. And there's a lot to clean up. And I think when you have a team that's got a chance to make a lot of noise, the best thing you can have is a big win and a lot to clean up. See if they can make a jump between tonight and next Saturday afternoon against the Valley. All right, so again, USC, you see eight along the 45-yard line. Two behind, and they try the straight ahead kick, but it doesn't go 10 yet. Wow, and then San Jose State falls on it once it did hit the 10. That's going to be the ruling. San Jose State ball. I don't know why SC didn't just go get that. Exactly. USC can touch the ball at any point. Yeah. San Jose State couldn't touch it before 10. Yeah. Through the field is illegal touching by the kicking team before oh. the kick went uh, 10 yards. All right. First down, USC. They must have seen that, yeah, right there. I'd imagine it grazed San Jose's yeah. eight player's jersey, and that's why I see players were pointing. Still, the officials are still conversing, and remember, it, it's rarely it's rarely used in this game. But the coach does have a challenge, yeah. one challenge. The ruling on the field of illegal touching is under review. All right, let's see who, who do they say touches the ball. Yeah, it would have been the thumb right there. I think before that that instance. Yeah. Did it hit? I think that's the question. Did it hit Halverson the yeah. kicker right when it bounced yeah. up in the air? All right. The onside kick is a rarely, in this day and age, a rarely successful play. Rarely. That's what they're talking about right there to the hit yep. the kicker. No that, ball, uh. no, that ball didn't go 10. But did USC touch it first? So the first question is going to be right here on this bound. Right there. That's hard to tell if it touched. All right, so now who's the first person to touch the ball? Yeah. Austin Jones. Yeah, I think that's going to be an illegal touch, is how yeah, I see it. Exactly. Nice shot there by the camera crew, too. That yeah, is. And thanks, by the way, we're back with our magnificent crew. Michael Molinari, our producer, Scott Barkey, our director, 
And we have just an incredible ca camera operators, tape operators, our audio. We're going to wish Jeff Backerman all the best. Jeff's with us tonight. He's on to a, another venture. It's also fascinating. It's one thing that fascinates me about the structure at USC is they don't have a special teams coach, a devoted special teams coach. That's interesting. Yeah, and, and the, there where you can have you know different analysts and, and kind of do it by committee. That's yeah. the the road that they've chosen to take. And the. The new clock rules, the pace of play had been really good yeah, until, until this. <laughs> this is a long review. And Brent Brennan, you can see they're on the San Jose side. They're all looking up at the scoreboard. It's a small replay screen up on the big video boards here. Not the, not the sharpest. View Lincoln Riley's looking at the closed end of the Coliseum. You know what else we saw this week, Yogi? Since we're waiting on all this, San Jose State, we went to their practice Wednesday. And I look up and there's something flying overhead. They have a drone. Yeah. San Jose State has a drone that they operate that tapes their practices. And I hadn't seen, I don't know if you had, I had not seen that before, or at least I hadn't noticed it before, let's just say that. Anyway, point being, I mentioned Brent Brennan, one of the things he did when he took the job, he wanted to have an experienced voice alongside him, and he hired to be an analyst, Terry Malley, mentioned Terry. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. The ball was not touched illegally. It was recovered by the kicking team yeah. at the 46 yard line. First down, San Jose State. That's the, that's the, that's the judgment, so. It is San Jose State ball. So Brent Brennan hired Terry Malley, whose dad who was a longtime football coach at Santa Clara. Telly was Terry was an offensive mastermind in the Arena League. Anyway, point being, I asked Terry Malley said that's actually maybe the only view you need. The drone view is so good of the offense that may to uh, practice that might be the only view we really need. Yeah, and I think that was it, fascinating to me. It, it really helps out the quarterback too from his lens, mm -hmm. seeing things unfold from that yeah. angle, because it's different than the Perch Doll 22. Well, you have the VR, you know, headsets that are out there now that have become, well, actually some Stanford people started that, and they're fairly commonplace so that backup quarterbacks can try to replicate the live reps they don't get. All right, so here we go, five minutes of change, and Chevin Cordero and the Spartans back to work. A lot of starters out there for USC defensively. The ruling on the field of an illegal block is under review. <laughs> well, this is not, this is not uh, smooth. <laughs> We had this conversation with Lincoln Riley yesterday also. A game we called in Arizona last year where there was just a mistake by the officiating crew before the end of the first half. And USC ends up winning the game, so there was not much aftermath, but Lincoln admitted he was pretty hot about it because it was something you could have fixed and it should have been fixed. Um, he is really unhappy with this, and I'm not sure what the illegal block is. And we're, we're, we're getting some up. So Lincoln, is this an official challenge by Lincoln? Watch yes. number 49 on San Jose State. 49 there in white coming down. Yeah. Well, that ball had gone 10 yards. You can't block. Yeah. Can't block. That would seem to be a pretty clean. I didn't notice that in real time. Lincoln noticed it tonight. And there's, we're trying to 
to make sure we're right on this. We believe this is the official coach challenge that I referenced. You get one coach challenge per game. And by that view, the pretty clear contact before the ball went 10. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, he's having a lot of dialogue with these After officials. After review, there is no foul for an illegal block by the kicking team. Okay. USC has charged the timeout. All right. Well, that's interesting. So you hear the result there, and the other question is, again, there was no flag thrown on the play for an, Ill for an illegal block. So anyway. Well, the one thing for SC's defense. That was 10 minutes. The one thing for SC's defense here that, that I that I like is the guys are still playing. Yeah. You know, Bear Alexander still playing. Solomon Burt playing. Tackett Curtis playing. Stay loose. Jeff Dahl, uh, Jeff Dale, the referee at the top right there. He is Jeff Dale's explaining the decision to Lincoln Riley. It's not going to be satisfactory as an educated guess. <laughs> Lincoln won't find it satisfactory, I should say. Yeah, I think with the amount of time that it's taken, nobody's going to find it satisfactory. <laughs> Cordero being chased by Gentry and is, let's see if that's going to be a catch or not let's see what the uh, release did he get nope incomplete out of bounds intended for Charles Ross You know, the one thing we noticed at practice, and we talked to Coach Riley about it afterwards, was for the first time, Ted, we've been at USC practice for a long time. For the first time since Pete Carroll was there, did it feel like it did when Pete was there? And by that, I mean just the competitive depth yeah. at every single position on the field. Quite nice throw, Cordero wound up and delivered a dart there to Ross inside the USC 35. But again, you, right here you see the new rule change in effect. That was a first down play, but the clock running. And it will again until the two minute mark. Going up there for Nash. Nash going up against Jacoby Covington. Nash just missed time to jump. Seems to say, oh, my bad a little bit. I think as the year goes on for Nash and Cordero, they're going to be proven to be one of the one of the top duos in yeah. the Mountain West Conference. And that young man again, Shevin Cordero, was voted the preseason Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year. Keep an eye on Anthony Lucas, top of the screen, number six. Watch him coming off the edge. Well, they doubled him. Kept a uh, kept it back in there to chip. I'll say this: yeah. just watching him every time he's been in, his effort is what has stood out to me. I mean, his size when you meet him at 6'5", 270, yeah, of course. But watching him come off the line of scrimmage tonight. Man, he's going to have, I think, a really impressive grade yeah. from this coaching staff. Lucas from Scottsdale and one year at Texas A&M before leaving. Third down. Cordero's going to use the feet again, and he's going to. Ooh, let's see where this mark is. Jahel Muhammad did a great job running him down, and don't believe Cordero got to the stick. He did not, so it'll be fourth down. Ruling on the field, fumble forward out of bounds. The ball would be placed at the spot of the fumble. Fourth down. Muhammad coming from the other side of the field. His effort, too. I mean, he, Lucas. Solomon Bird, 
These guys at the edge positions for SC have been bringing it all game. Spartans need the 24 yard line. And we'll get it. Bates coming out of the backfield. Bryson Shaw on the cover for USC. And so that may calm things down a little bit for Lincoln Riley. And USC comfortable, under four to go. Two years ago, almost, uh, well, it'll be two years next week, San Jose State played here. And at the time, the legendary Tim Tessalone was finishing, or uh, beginning, actually, his final season of service to USC. And a legend, a true legend in college athletics, Lawrence Fan, was here for San Jose State. Lawrence passed away at the end of that football season. But I will honestly sit here and tell you, I don't think there's a more significant figure in San Jose State athletics in the last 40 years than Lawrence Fan. His love and devotion to San Jose State is unmatched. And we haven't had the chance to say that. So we didn't see the Spartans last year, but uh, Lawrence, we, we went there Wednesday and I was talking to everybody about it. We still miss him. Yeah. Still miss him. All class. Well said, Ted. One of the all-timers. They did. There's some pretty good names when Oregon State goes there next uh, Sunday to see if you walk up on the wall of that San Jose State Stadium and you see the names up there. Bill Walsh, graduate. Dick Verneal, yeah. graduate. Jeff Garcia, successful quarterback who played at San Jose. Jared Wilhite was a real good running back in the NFL, San Jose State. And Trojans trying to run here to get the clock going and finish off this with freshman Joyner getting the carry. Yeah, to your point about next weekend's game, this game, if anybody in Oregon State needed a wake-up call, I doubt they did under Jonathan Smith. But this is going to give it to you when you go back and you watch the film because I think or what San Jose State has proven is that they're a team that's going to make noise in their league this year. They've got the talent, this defense while losing, some really gifted players like the defensive player of the year in the league and junior Fajoko a year ago NFL draft pick. They're continually to re continually building this defensive front. And there's a throw caught by Robinson Deuce Robinson. And Kyrie Robinson running tonight for San Jose State. Miller Moss now thrown six passes, completed four. And a little dub off in there gets Relique Brown in the game with a touch, and he's out of bounds just across midfield. Hey, our Pac-12 Post Game Report presented by 76 will come up back on our beautiful new studio with Ashley and Nigel Burton and Max Brown. And we have, uh, you can see a breakdown of the big night for freshman Zachariah Branch. There's a lot of freshmen you can do that with. And looking ahead to everything coming up next weekend, Malachi Nelson just to keep the freshman theme going. Number one recruit in all of America. This league and a lot of the top quarterbacks come. Malachi Nelson, low. Illegal substitution, offense, 12 players in formation, five-row penalty, still fourth down. Yeah, that's first a, down. That is definitely a problem. Yeah. But for Malachi Nelson, this yeah. is a guy, heralded recruit, mid-year enrollee, but never really got healthy. Still dealing with an injury, beginning of training camp, was working his way back in, but mentally had always been locked in. You know, Caleb Williams, Miller Moss, that quarterback room, they take a ton of pride of keeping guys connected especially when it's easy to kind of disconnect if you're not the guy, if you're not playing. Now he's getting his first burn of his career in college. All right, in the game there on the carry is Matt Colombo. But uh, what, I, what I was impressed by getting ready for this week, you know, because we were here, Malachi Nelson played quite a bit in the spring game. And 
what we've been told now this past week was that he was about 50% yeah. of his best. I mean, he wasn't in any danger. That's not the point. But he was probably about 50% of where he needed to be in his rehab. And he, and he, was, he put that kind of effort out to play in the spring game. All right, Trojans getting a bunch of guys into the game. That's the freshman receiver from Los Alamitos, Makai Lemon. You know, again, just to that point in practice, Ted, earlier, I, I don't want to underscore it because this team finally does have that competitive depth. And what makes it so critical is that practice, if you're a receiver, you know Relique Brown is trying to get your reps. Makai Lemon's trying to get your reps. In the O-line, we've seen eight guys play tonight at every position, defensive front, secondary. And I think that's just allowing this team to have a real chance to make legit national noise compared to last year where they overachieved and, of course, made a ton of national noise. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you just felt it. I, I told Coach Riley right after practice, I mean, it, it felt like it did back in the day because guys are battling. Yeah. You know, I think, I think there were times here at USC where you knew, despite how you practiced, you were going to play. And that is not the case anymore. And that's going to bode extremely well for this team as the season continues. Isn't it amazing that the year they had last year, Lincoln Riley said it. Thought we overachieved. Yeah. A subjective decision, by the way. A subjective evaluation. Incomplete pass. Going to give USC one more play. Hughes Robinson, the intended receiver. Are actually, my bad, that's fourth down there. So one more snap for San Jose State. Talk a lot more next week when we're back here for the Nevada game about some of the things Caleb Williams has done. Measure what kind of person he is, the involvement he's made in foundations in his home area, the nation's capital. Caleb is, for all the young quarterbacks, he's the blueprint of how to handle yourself at the Amen. position. Yep. Everybody doesn't have his gifts. In 2023 now. Yeah, exactly With everything right. exactly, that I think that's the point, right? The blueprint to, to today. handle it today. All right, last play, maybe. Time out. Time out. USC. <laughs> They're second of the half. 30 seconds. What you get to do here is you you know, for Lincoln Riley, just working situations. They might say, hey, this is a save the game type of moment. Do they anticipate a Hail Mary? Are they going to put that defensive personnel group in, just bat the ball down? And again, like we talked about, if you see Jacoby Lane coming out on the field, that's exactly what they're doing. You see him deep, it's kind of like your deep punt returner. And, and I love that for Lincoln Riley. Situational awareness is going to come up all season long, especially as the games get bigger, the Lights get brighter yeah. and more and more is at stake. So uh, I, of all the timeouts late that's, in the game, Ted, I kind of like that one. That's pretty cool. Jacoby Lane is back on the goal line, along with Kalen Bullock. And instead, just going to hand it off and let Connolly run, and he may run it all the way. Let's see. Now he's going to get down. Have a good, good run for a stat line, and that winds up taking out somebody on the sideline. Pops back up. And it also ends the game, and USC delivers on their season opener for 2023. And there's, yep, well, there's a lot of new names, a lot of new faces. That's a returning face, Austin Jones. But the new faces for USC on offense impress. Zachariah Branch leading the way. A lot of questions. I think there are a bunch of answers and a ton to work on for USC, but net net, big win, explosive plays, and a team that's taken that first step towards where they hope to be at the end of the season. All right, thanks again to our entire crew. We'll be back here next Saturday. We have a whole slew of games next weekend. We'll get more information on that when we join our Pac-12 postgame report presented by 76, as we said it to our studio at Ashley Adamson.